Well, the engine is 2,500 parts. The engine's a lot, if you, yeah. if you do a parts count, take out the transmission and the engine and count each little part of them, um, then I'm sure that's true. The remaining parts so. being the chassis yeah. and the wheels it, and the body and not the a lot of count. design and the interior. <laughs> uh, but basically, I view Tesla as one of us. They're, now they, they will mm -hmm. absolutely go into a froth hearing this. But they're a well-funded um, conversion shop that does an excellent job of converting loads to leases. It's a beautiful job. To Teslas. Um, we actually talked this year a little bit about doing kind of a poor man's Tesla. What could we get the price down to, starting with like a used Elise? Yeah, we did. We you talked know, and put quite seriously a, about a it. pretty strong uh, motor, like... Um, NetGain's new 11-inch um, high-voltage jobber mm -hmm. and a Zilla 2K and some batteries and, and just seeing what we could do there. Here's where we got derailed, the Evora. Um, now, the problem with the Evora is instead of being $48,000, it's seventy. dollars It was close to eighty grand. Yeah. But it's a 2 plus 2 with this huge area behind the seats for two more seats or for luggage and so forth, mm -hmm. um, like the Tesla and the Elise, but twice the size. And that opens the door to a 400-mile Roadster. Yes, that's, that's what we were talking about. Or more. Mm -hmm. And so it, yep. it may well be, I understand that Lotus is, is having a little problem filling demand and meeting schedules, on the Evora. The car is also a lot easier to get into and out of. It's just a bigger car. Um, and so we decided if we were going to do a Tesla to wait and... and uh, for the Evora. For yeah. the Evora yeah. and do that. That's They're a lot. doing an IPO and taking uh, government money to um, um, develop a electric car uh, at $55,000 and I would imagine some of the hard questioning is, we can't loan you this money and do this uh, type of a deal for a $50,000 rich guy car. That's, that's, that, that's not politically doable. You gotta work with us here. That's right. And uh, so that, that's the other possibility is that the Roadster is just too expensive and doesn't fit with their plans of introducing the S in partnership right. with, with the government and so forth. Now I have uh, kind of decried these little four-door sedans, but I gotta say the Tesla Model S, and we'll put a shot up on the screen, is uh, it's, it's not a Fisker Karma. But right. it, but it's pretty slick right. looking, so you know it might have some appeal. The uh, other area that we're seeing is struggles with the battery companies, and they're getting tons of money. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah. an interesting thing has happened. A one two three has just announced that they beat out Interdell um, right. for batteries for the um, for the Fisker Karma. And I want to read you something. This is kind of cute. Um, Fisker Autos selected A123 because of the company's ability to meet our performance needs and rapidly scale to our production volume, said Enric Fisker, chief executive officer of Fisker Automobile. Fisker, Fisker is committed to developing environmentally friendly cars that don't sacrifice style or performance. A123's technology will ensure the karma delivers. So okay. clearly, Fisker mm -hmm. picked A123 because they're the best battery technology out there. Later on in the press <laughs> release, it does mention, in addition to entering the supply agreement, a123 also announced its intent to invest up to 23 million dollars in Fisker Automotive's current funding round in order to establish a strategic relationship with the car company. The contemplated investment would consist of 13 million in cash and 10 million in A123 common stock and would be subject to the completion of certain terms and conditions. Well, that, that gets you friendly real fast. That's one way to sell batteries <laughs> right. is to buy into the company that yep. needs startup yep. funding. Uh, 
would enter now stoop so low? Actually, oh, they only did. Only if they have to. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have uh, done a similar deal and announced that they beat out A123 for um, Think, the Norwegian oh, uh, sure. company that used to do the little Think NEV. Well, now they have a city car and uh, that's going to charge in 15 minutes uh, using uh, AeroVironment's uh, level uh, three uh, uh, charger. And... Um, and so Interdell won that one, but they're investing in things. Okay. So we're entering an so, area <laughs> where the battery manufacturers are going to um, sell batteries by buying electric car companies um, who then kind of have to take their sales. Yeah, that, that kind of firms up the, uh, the supply agreement. Interdell mm -hmm. is also um, doing something with uh, Volvo on their... Um, um, C30 model. Oh, the C30 electric that they're doing? Yeah, they're yeah. going to do a C30 electric. I've always liked Volvo. They, you know, those are one of the safest cars in the world. On the crash tests mm -hmm. every year, Volvo always comes out on top. So No, you can't have mine. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You, 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 I, I was thinking you drove a Saab. You drive a Volvo. Okay, huh? you know, you can't drive. Yeah, you can't. No, they're, they're, yeah, uh, they are. they're little tanks. Um, they just, you can't hardly get killed in one. Um, you have to work at it. You have God to work knows at I it. have. <laughs> so we're seeing some kind of battery wars uh, where they're buying into um, the uh, car manufacturers um, so that they'll have a channel uh, for their batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, uh, a lot of these startups um, keep uh, going down. What was that little three wheeler that we uh, we put up on the screen? I kind of like that. Oh, it, was that, well, it wasn't very pretty. Uh, <laughs> FVT or something yeah. like that. Well, these guys just keep chugging along. Oh, really? Yeah. And, okay. and they, they've hired another guy and, uh, you know, they're just, they're going after this X prize in April. And, uh, oh, yeah. They, okay. They're, they're yep. just That's chugging right. along. Uh, like a different they're going to put air conditioning in it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, They think they're going to hit 300 miles per gallon with their little hybrid uh, concept there. I'd like to buy one of those, yank the hybrid out and put in batteries and uh, away we go. <laughs> My take is that we're seeing a lot of announcements. It, it's a flood of announcements. Everybody has an electric car right now. Um, I guess Toyota's Prius, uh, they're kind they're, of they're on having the ropes. A, they're having a tough toy. They were uh, close to 300 and some thousand vehicles mm -hmm. recalled. And this, Plus, that's this a brings lot. up some of the problems we're struggling with and will continue to struggle with. I've had seven different strategies on the regenerative braking on the Mini Cooper and continue to look at it. Some mm -hmm. of the Mini guys have just told me they love working it off the accelerator. Yeah, they, like I said, they've got a whole driving style now developed mm -hmm. to uh, And what to that prior thing is, Brian, there's no problems with the brakes. They say in theory you could be without brakes for a second because of a software glitch. I think they're falling on their sword a little hard. I don't think uh, there's really any loss of uh, batteries, but there is some perception problems in going so, right. from regen to mechanical mm -hmm. brakes and so forth, and people are not entirely used to that. And yeah. so the feel, the human, just the feeling, yeah. human factors, ergonomics is, uh, is a big part of mm -hmm. uh, designing a car. And you have to kind of get it right, or somebody's going to drive it into the wall. BMW put their regen off of the accelerator, and it's fixed. You get all of it, whatever they set, when you remove your foot from right. the accelerator. Now, they tell me there's kind of a sweet spot where I can still get my coast, my freewheel. Okay, I'm not and, really and not putting, be slammed in the right. dashboard with right. the brakes not, on. I'm not putting in any current, but I'm not uh, uh, regening too. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I still like the idea of doing it with the brakes. Here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to put a relay on the brake. Our mm -hmm. controller, this Tim 600, will do off the accelerator or it'll do off the brakes. It doesn't care. It's got inputs for both ways. And it has an input for a pot where you can adjust the adjust level. Yeah. So unlike the BMW version AC propulsion provided, which is adjustable in the, the unit, but they just don't let the drivers adjust it. Um, we're going to put two pots on the dash and a relay that switches 
um, these pots, which one is which one? active. Either break or, uh, or throttle. And so we'll be able to independently adjust the regen for the accelerator mm -hmm. and for the brake. And I'll probably put a switch in there where you can switch between brake, accelerator, or both. Both, yeah. And, um, and we'll just um, learn by experience playing with that which one works. Yeah. And then that's where we'll kind of leave it. But since ours is a prototype, it's going to be my car to drive around. I'm going to rig it up where we can do it both mm -hmm. ways. And so when you hit the brakes, it'll simply switch to the brake pot with a relay. And when you take off the brakes, it will go back to the... Uh, to, the um, to the throttle pot. The yeah. throttle pot. Yeah. And uh, 